One thing we learned was that dun, 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 gets translated uh, by this textbook as in, at, on, for, among, by, than. How could you forget this? But we translate it as final particle because we are scientists. So, for those of you watching this on YouTube, welcome. This, uh, my name is Colin Gorey. I'm a linguist and my channel is all about language. It's a place for, for people who love language to, um, you know, kind of get their fix of, of everything from, from linguistics to constructed languages, to fun ancient languages, to language learning um, strategies and tactics and tips and that kind of thing. Uh, so if this sounds like your cup of tea, then I would uh, be very delighted if you liked videos, subscribe to the channel, click bell buttons as the, you know, as, as, as the case may be. Um, we are going today to be looking at number two in the series on classical Chinese. So we are going to delve back in. If you have not seen the first in this series, uh, I would say look at the link in the description and ch uh, head back there before you come back here and uh, forge ahead with chapter two. So here we go. We are going to switch videos by as if by magic. Right? There you go. Okay. So we have dun, 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 dun. yesterday, yesterday, a few weeks ago. I don't remember exactly how long ago it was. It was, it was a good amount of time, though. Um, we talked about lucky and bad omens. And we had our, see if I can adjust here. So we translated chapter one's text. Um, so that, again, the video will be there. What did we learn about classical Chinese uh, from this, from this, from doing this? One thing we learned was that every, um, well, let's, let's take a look in the textbook and you'll see, you don't have to take my word for it. You look at the vocabulary and there's a tremendous amount of word class flexibility. What does that mean? That means that you don't just have a, a, a word meaning to be able as a verb, but you also have it in a, a noun form, um, being able, ability. So this is uh, nung. Um, we also have <laughs> a preposition-like thing here, yu, um, which gets translated uh, by this textbook as in, at, on, for, among, by, than, <laughs> all sorts of things like that. Here's another example, uh, yen, which means words and language, but it also means to speak. And to express and how do you know what type you know what word class um, it's going to be used as in the particular text yeah that's the question um, sometimes as far as i can gather it is not especially obvious and this is part of our challenge uh, as we learn so without further ado let us go into our second dun, 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 our second text um, for those of you who are not familiar with the structure of this textbook, we have the classical or literary Chinese text on the right. We have a, uh, a Mandarin text on the, on the left, which is a translation of the uh, classical Chinese. We're just going to focus on the text on the right. Uh, and I stayed up last night and I wrote out the text. I hope I didn't make any mistakes. Um, so we are going to... Go down to our vocabulary, do, 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 and we are going to translate. Okay, and my eternal struggle with the sizes of various windows. Okay, so what do we have here? We start off with um, uh, with with a, a character we've seen before. This is the character um, that can be read Ren in uh, in Mandarin. Uh, which means a person. So we'll use this kind of glossing format, this interlinear gloss format, where we have the um, the language's uh, orthographic form on the first line. We'll do a morpheme by morpheme gloss on the second. So we're just going to go through, and in this case, um, since characters and morphemes are so tightly connected um, in the uh, in the Chinese writing system, uh, we will just do a, essentially a character by character translation in the second, and then we'll do a free translation in the third, uh, in the third line. So here we have Ren, um, and we can we can write person for that. 
what's next? Well, here's a new word, um, or a new a new character at least. Um, yeah, we'll talk about word versus character some other time. I'm just going to be very sloppy today. I hope no one minds. Uh, so we have ing, um, which we have as a shadow. So ren ing, uh, a pers person person shadow. Um, I suppose we'll be learning about the uh, relationship between these two these two uh, morphemes as time goes on. Um, but if I were to give it a, a, an initial guess, I would say something like a person's shadow. Um, just call that a, a genitive or whatever you want to call it in this case. All right, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's keep going. So we have a, um, we have shin here. Shin new, new or recent. Um, Let's let's keep it simple. We'll adjust as we go if we need to. Um, oh, did I get this wrong? Yeah, this is not sun. This is moon. Apologies. Let me quickly rectify my mistake. I have a little I have a little lexicon here of all of the words that we've learned. Apologies. There we go. New new moon, Xin Yue, Xin Yue, Chu Shang. Um, so new moon, and we have this Chu, which means to begin or at first. Um, and uh, Brandt is helping us out here uh, by italicizing the uh, the reading that that he recommends. Um, so just new moon, just Shang. Um, which means up, top, to go up, summit, high, or best. This is that word class flexibility coming back at us. Um, so go up um, is the, the guide here. I'm going to put a, a period between the two words so that we can keep our sort of one-to-one -one mapping. A period just means we'd normally write this with a space, but because we're using spaces to separate the different morphemes in the, in the, the gloss, um, we need a period. Okay, so new moon, just go up. Um, so the new moon had just risen. Maybe something like that. Um, I'll wait to do the free translation until we've seen more of the text. Um, okay, let's... Uh, we have next... Jian. Uh, Jian C. We don't get help on that one. I don't know why. Um, I just happen to know that that means that. Jian uh, Xing. Um, Xing. Here we have to walk, to do, to act, to carry out. So walk. Um, by the way, because I guessed here about Jian, I could be wrong that it's being used in a different uh a di different context i just know that from from mandarin <laughs> um but let's just go with our guess uh jian xing si walk uh what's next lang uh we're talking about a veranda or a corridor so yeah let's let's let, let's do veranda here that's nice um and then we have xia um, I believe we had that in our first lesson. Apologies for the scrolling. Do we have xia? Huh. I can't see it, can you? Um, I'm going to use my, um, my lifeline of knowing a little bit of modern Mandarin. Oh no, here it is. It's right here. What was I thinking? Uh, xia. Um, beneath, down, beneath, inferior, come down to take off. Um, so beneath, brilliant. Um, okay, see, walk, veranda, beneath. Not entirely sure what we're going to do with this yet. Um, do, do we get any help? Do we get any little notes here? Oh, 
oh no that's not that's not jian okay those of you in the future on youtube you will realize you will see my mistake this is not jian this is r so let's get it here because i don't have my proper input method set up um let's just go ah okay this is why it didn't make sense a oh boy um er xing lang xia uh, a boy walked uh, beneath a veranda great moving on uh si. um like similar to seem so seem yo uh, to be or have um e ren one so this is actually a pretty self-explanatory character um just the single line meaning one ran person uh, okay so it seem seem to be one person what did it seem to be one person what did one person seem to be doing um oh thank you for the scroll reminder ha 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 uh I always forget where my camera is on this thing. I'll see if I can, whoop, that's wrong. Uh, I see if I can just move that off a little bit to the side, potentially. No, I'll just, I'll, I'll remember to scroll, he said with utter confidence. Um, 是有一人, uh, then we have sway, sway to follow. So there seemed to be one person follow um, qi ho, qi ho. Um, I seem to recall that qi is like uh, his, hers, theirs. Um, we're giving it, we're getting a gloss of he, she, it, they, this, that. But I think it will make a little bit more sense um, if we go qi ho, his, um, his behind, behind him. I guess maybe that's the the best translation um at his um yeah yeah following following behind him i think that's the best translation um it seems a bit rude i guess when you write it out like that but you know this is linguistics you can't be uh, too bashful okay um then we have uh duh, 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 duh. This is our, our negative particle, boo. Um, not, then we have gan, which is here, dare, not dare. Um, and then we have hui, gu. And the text gives us a handy, uh, handy bit of help here, hui, gu, to look back. So we can call this look back and I'm just going to make a little remark that we're considering those to be um, a set phrase there so he did not dare to look back well obviously you know he thinks someone's someone's falling behind him it's a moon you know a moonlit night um, okay what's next dun, 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 dun. okay so we have this this G which is haste, We're getting haste, ru, ji ru. He hastened, he hastened, he hastened to go in maybe, something like this, gao, tell, and zi, elder sister. Okay. So he, he hastened to go in to tell his elder sister, or he impatiently, uh, went in to tell his elder sister. And now I'm going to scroll. Oop, not that much. Okay, what did the elder sister say? The elder sister said... I don't get much out of those scrolls, do I, when I font size this, this high? Okay, so the elder sister said... This this you 
body. So, ci, ci ru shen. This, you, body. And then we have zhi. And, oh, if I scroll down a little bit more here, we see a little bit of help. Um, wu shen zhi ying. Um, the shadow of your body. So, we can maybe call this your, call this uh, an apostrophe S, this J here. And then let's say shadow. And then we have this final particle we had before, um, which we didn't know exactly how to translate, but we translate it as final particle because we are scientists. All right, what's next? So, I would guess that this the translation here is this is your body shadow, the shadow of your body. Um, you, Li, stand up. Dong, a lamp. Qian, before. So you stand up before a lamp, in front of a lamp. Um, Xing, this is walk. Um, Zhi Xia, under the uh, sun, under, so under the sun. Um, let's move on a little bit. Then we have this particle, jie, which is, uh, which our textbook says is an equalizing particle. So it indicates that a quality, a state, I'm assuming, or an action relates to two or several objects to the same extent. So I think we translate this as um, as something like all in in English so or in any case something like that um, let's just gloss it as all have shadow all right coming to the end of it now and then we have this I believe this is our WH question. So let's call it WH, and then we have Wang, uh, which we're given to forget. And here we have our second use of this J particle. Um, up above, we are using it as a an apostrophe S, as a kind of subordinator here. But here, we are using it like we used it in chapter one which is uh, the accusative case of the third person. So third accusative. Um, and then we have this yeah, this interrogative particle afterwards. So let's call that a question mark. <laughs> so something like, how could you forget this? I'm, a, I'm assuming that's what the translation would be. And then the final line, uh, we have the boy, um, uh, it's called a consequential particle. Um, I actually like thereupon better as a gloss for it, so I'm going to use that thereupon. Um, ooh, which we get as understand. Okay, let's do a free translation of this because that's how we're going to tell if we've we've interpreted it as the uh, as the text has us. So. Going back up to the start, let's just say the title is A Person's Shadow. Um, the new moon had just, um, had just risen. If it's the new moon, does that mean that it's dark? That, does, that means the whole thing doesn't make sense. Maybe new moon means something different um, uh, for this author than it does for me. Or maybe I just don't know anything about the moon. That's always a possibility. Um, okay, the new moon had just risen. Uh, a boy um, was walking beneath a veranda. Lovely, lovely. Sorry, scroll, scroll. <laughs> I will remember, probably. Um, it seemed that there was someone falling behind him.
if we can maybe maybe get some some word wrap on this thing I don't know I think that'd be nicer great um, scrolling again he did not dare or he dared not look back um, the question is what do we do with this this haste morpheme is this going to be a kind of adverbial is it going to be sort of a a serial verb construction kind of he hastened he haste hasten go he hastened to go um i am going to say something like in haste i'm going to make it an adverbial he went in to tell his elder sister his elder wouldn't i wouldn't repeat that in english but said this is your body's shadow okay i think i understand what's going on here you stand up before a lamp you walk under the sun in both cases, there will be a shadow. Um, so this is a kind of an if, or, or whether you whether you stand up before a lamp, in front of a lamp, or walk in the sun. I could say under the sun. I don't know, under the sun. That works. Um, You'll have a shadow. I don't know exactly how know how we should translate this all in this case. Um, I think maybe what I would do is say whether you whether you stand in front of a lamp or walk under the sun. Let's make this a bit freer. Walk out in the sun, you'll have a shadow. Um, Oh yeah, always. That's that's a good that's a good translation. Thank you. You'll always have a shadow. Um, how could you forget this? Then the boy understood. Excellent. Thank you, Samuel. Okay, so let's um, let's test our translation. So the learning is happening in real time here. It's fantastic. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, oh, before we check our translation, let's look at the notes. So here we have um, yeah, this note that, that zhi is the sign of the possessor. Here, the shadow of your body. Here we have this note about jie, which Samuel has, has helpfully um, given us the translation of always, which works here, but I think it's, it's going to be very contextual how you translate that. Um, Okay, and then we have some other example sentences. Can I say again, I love this textbook. It gives you um, great examples of all of the all the constructions it's trying to teach you. So we have ren ren zhi, uh, sorry ren ren jie zhi, um, person person you know to do the gloss person person all know. So everybody knows that. Um, lao shao jie zai. So old um, and young are all there. The question, oh, this is a great question. Do you have to know um, some sort of a modern synodic language um, such as Mandarin or Cantonese uh, to, to learn classical Chinese? No, but it helps. <laughs> I actually only started learning what, you know, comparatively little Mandarin I know because I wanted to access more resources on classical Chinese. And then of course, you know, it's a language, so I fell in love with it. But, um, but there are now some resources that are out there um, that will teach you classical Chinese without reference to Mandarin. There is a, um, a, a textbook that's come out recently. It's very inexpensive. It's called uh, Classical Chinese for Everyone or Classical Chinese is for Everyone. One of the two by um, Brian Van Norden. It is uh, a great textbook that's sort of meant to get you 
get you started. Unfortunately, you know, um, not in the public domain, so we can't have it here, but that's the one I would recommend uh, you use uh, if you're starting now. It's a very, very gentle introduction. I have read it in the past, and uh, you know, I'm sure I've forgotten 90% of what's in there. You can see little glimpses, perhaps, of things I, I remember as we go through this. Um, okay, so what's next? Uh, and then we have this line, all within the four seas are brothers. Interesting. Uh, so four seas within, four seas possessive particle within, so within the four seas. Um, all. Um, xiong, xiong di, um, are this, we have this nice compound of elder brother, younger brother, meaning brothers. Um, and then this yeah particle, which, yeah, hmm, that's interesting. I am curious to learn more about it. Um, other than to say final particle, we may not get any better than that in this, in this book, but. All right, and then we have um, the next thing here, which er um, nai uh, wu, the boy then understood, consequential particle. I think then is a decent translation, thereupon. I also like thereupon, that's kind of nice. Um, uh, okay, so then we have some more examples. Um, nai ke. It will then do. It, in, in, in that case, that's fine. Um, something like this. By shi nai sui. Hundred, hundred things. Then, follow. Everything then has gone right. Oh, that's a bit. That's a bit too idiomatic for me to to connect with at this point, but. There you go. There's a, another sentence for us. Um, okay. Oh, and then we get to see if we're right or not. Okay, so let's do it. Let's go back up. Man's shadow. Okay, I said a person's shadow. You know, this is a really old textbook. Um, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give that to us. Um, okay, so then let's see. The new moon had just risen. The new moon had just risen. Nice. Okay. A boy was passing under a veranda. A boy was walking beneath a veranda, you know. Potato, potato. Um, it seemed that there was someone following behind him. Um, and and it seemed to him that somebody was following him. Okay, great, that's fine. Uh, he dared not look back. The boy did not dare to look back. Okay, fine, great. Um, oh yeah, here's the one I was curious about. What are we going to do with this, this G, this haste morphine? Um, hurriedly. Ah, okay, so, so Brandt uses, uses it as an adverbial as well. In haste. Uh, hurriedly, he went in, he entered the house and told his elder sister. Okay, I, I, say, I said went in to tell his elder sister. That, um, that uh, purpose isn't in Brandt's translation, so maybe it would be better to say and told. Although maybe... Maybe it, the classical Chinese accommodates both translations. I do not know. Um, what else? His sister said, yes, his sister said, it is the shadow of your body. This is your body's shadow. Okay, good. More or less the same. Um, and here we have, when you are standing before a lamp or going under the sun, there's always a shadow. So whether you stand in front of a lamp or walk out in the sun, you'll always have a shadow. More or less, more or less the same. The only difference is, um, instead of this, this weather, they have a when. Um, and then, how could you forget this? <laughs> and uh, Brandt has, how is it that you forget it? Uh, the boy then understood, then the boy understood. Okay, so that's interesting. That's interesting. I feel as if this is 
sinking in a little. The writing system makes it quite hard. Um, the writing system makes it hard for me anyway, because my literacy in, in Mandarin is not super wonderful. Um, but bit by bit, we can, we can start to read these texts. So uh, I, think, I think, you know, let's give ourselves a pat on the back. Um, I'll even do it literally. You can do it literally if you want at home as well. And I think we'll draw this segment to a close. I am going to scoot us back over here. If you have been watching on YouTube and you've you've gotten all the way through that and struggled with me as I've I've uh, read through this this text, thank you so much. Um, and if if you're in the mood too and you like to see more of this stuff, give this video a like and subscribe to the channel, all that good jazz, and uh, you'll see more of this kind of video. So yeah, the more the more I see people enjoying and and um, interacting with this content, the, the more of it all I'll make. So, um, and, and thank you to Samuel for your help. Um, it was, uh, it was a great translating with you and I will, I will end this segment here.